Network Security Monitoring. In this video, I want to show you how you can test your monitoring tools, monitoring software, what you can do to check if the system that you decided to buy and pay 50,000 pounds is up and running. Of course, I'm kidding. I just show you how I test a few things in my network. It is really important. I decided to 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 record a video and show you that that topic. It sounds like a very specific topic, but it is important. A lot of people buy a piece of software like that and they don't really test it. They just you know, they just set it up test it uh, during the the first the first phase you know and that's it then they add a lot of sensors and they don't test anything and it's not that they are lazy do you know why well because it is not easy to test it it's not easy and the reason for that is let's say you have OSPF right let's say you have OSPF uh, what's wrong with this thing? Uh, just give me a moment. Okay, I fixed it. The reason for that is that it's not easy to to test it. It's sometimes it's not even possible to test it. Let's say you have a router, right? And this router is running OSPF and VRFs and VPNs, right? If you really want to test it, you should bring the OSPF down, change something in VRFs, and tweak your VPNs. Of course, almost all applications like that will allow you to to test a sensor, to to you know to go and check a value, make sure that it's okay. But my question is, and that is a real example. Let's say you want to check that your power supply unit power supply unit in a 3750 is okay and there are no issues with it yeah what you can do you can find an SNMP OID object ID right and you can ask an application like that and can you go and check every five minutes go and check right and your switch will tell you yes power supply unit number one is up and running. Five minutes later, power sub supply unit number one is up and running and so on. Well, one day your switch dies, right? Literally, it just dies. And you say, what, what's, what's wrong? And that was the power supply unit. Why? Well, because there was a bug in the iOS and in this SNMP object ID, OID, and it didn't work. It didn't report what it was supposed to report. And as far as I remember, that was a power supply unit issue with that switch. As far as I remember, I can't, can't guarantee that was the case. I remember there was a bug in SNMP messages and a switch was very happy to report power supply was okay, even though it was not. Yeah, that is a really dangerous situation. Now a question is, how do you want to test it? Well, you should you should pull it out, right? There are two power supply units, or you have, you know, a stack of 3850s, whatever, or two power supplies, yeah, let's say 40, uh, 4500s, right? You have a switch like that with two power supplies. You should literally pull it out and test it. Well... It's not an easy task if this network is up and running at the moment, right? Of course, you can you can schedule that on Sunday morning and do that, yeah? Please remember, it's not easy to test all these things. Of course, we should trust that, you know, Cisco will not make, you know, 99 out of 100 uh, OIDs in a way that they're not going to work. I, I, I can tell you that's not the case. Uh, it's still, it, it can happen, right? That's why you should test as many things as possible, right? With OSPF, it's 
pretty easy. You can always check, yeah, and see if OSPF, you know, OSPF neighbors will change from time to time. Uh, they will, they will change it. OSPF will change its status, right? It can go from, uh, I don't know, DR to BDR, right? DR other, whatever. It's just, it will change, right? Areas will change, you know, routing tables will change. You should, you should keep an eye and see if you, if you receive in SNMP application what you expect to see. I want to show you how I test my Nagios server. Do you remember the Nagios? I showed you that, let me... Oops. What the hell? I just put my pen on the tablet. Where is it? Okay. That's the Nagios server that I use. And when we go to the main page, Where was it? That's the one. You will see that... What's wrong? Here we go. You will see that everything is in green, what I want to see. Yeah? Now, how can I test it? Just pain in the ass. Why? I'm just clicking on it and it's not working. What's wrong with this thing? Here we go. Thank you. Okay. Please note that all my ports are in green. Yeah? Nagios is saying, well, bandwidth is 0.1, yeah, or just whatever, everything is okay. Can you trust it? And the answer is you should not. You should test it. How can you test it? That's pretty easy. You can generate some traffic, right? You can, you can copy some files, you know, download from the internet or copy in your local area network. And I want to show you how I test it. To make it more complicated, to be honest, I want to make sure that I go uh, through... I, I will use an Ether channel, right? And I don't remember where my servers and computers are connected. Yeah, it's a switch, you know, in most cases you don't really care, you just patch. Well, maybe servers you should, you should label your ports, but a lot of companies don't do that. Well. They should. <laughs> uh, well, I I don't. I don't. I, I have a rack next to me. I can always uh, check that. And the problem is, I don't have this rack next to me. I I am recording that that session remotely. I I use VPN, and I can't really check that. I could yeah ask my fiance, but it's like, well, she's not technical. So she will say, oh, I don't know, this green thing is, I don't know. Okay, so I I cannot spend five hours explaining to her what a switch is. That's why we'll use some, our, we'll use some CCNA skills to track it down. I'll show you what, what I mean. Let me get rid of all these things. Okay, I'll show you what the problem is. You can treat that as a small challenge. I'm pretty sure it will be easy for you, but I have two HP switches. But does ma doesn't matter. It, the CLI is like on on a Cisco switch, and two Cisco 35, 3550s, two Cisco core switches. What's wrong with this? Okay, now I know they're connected like that. There's an Ether channel everywhere. I have got a management PC, 172.16.1.21, and a server, or two servers to be more specific, 
and dot uh, dot eight. There's dot nine as well, right? What I want to do, I want to copy a file from this guy to one of these servers. However, I want to make sure they are not connected to the same switch, right? Because Nagios is not going to report anything because it will be copied locally, right? I don't want that. I would like to find a device that is connected to an HP switch, number one. Go like that and copy it to a server that is connected to my second switch. Why? Well, because Nagios should report something here and here, right? Maybe CPU, whatever, yeah? Uh, CPU, no, but, but bandwidth it well, yeah? Okay, how can I do that? Let's say you don't have a network diagram, right? You want to, you want to make it happen, yeah? You want to check it. How can you do that? Well, let's, let's check. Let's see. First of all, let's telnet to one of the HP switches. We changed. Ooh. Okay. I've changed the font for you so you can see that. That'll do. Okay. I want to keep the network diagram on the screen. Show interface brief. It's not show IP interface brief, but the idea is the same. Here you can see two Ether channels. 1718. 17, 18, 19, and 20. The problem is, I don't know where my PC... I don't know where my PC is, okay? But I know the IP address. What can I do? Well, I can ping it from the switch. Because... And I can do show ARP. I can see the MAC address. And it was trunk 2, right? Uh, it means that this MAC address arrived from that port, which is an Ether channel. It means I know that 172.16.1.21 is somewhere behind this trunk 2, which is an Ether channel. The good thing is that when I do show interface brief, I think I should find some description when I do show run. Yeah, please know that that's that's not bad. Yeah, we can see that there is an Ether channel, seventeen, eighteen, and nineteen and twenty. Yeah, and we know it goes to call one and call two. Now trunk two is port seventeen and eighteen. It means I know that. This MAC address arrived from call 1, from here. I know one more thing. There are no end devices connected to my call switches, and that makes sense. That's what we try and do in the real world as well. It means that 172.16.1.21 has to be on HP switch number 2. Does that make sense? That's a CNA, but... Okay, let me ping dot two now. Show ARP. Dot two is twenty six. Nice. Okay. To verify that, just to double check, I will turn it to the other guy, the other HP switch, one seventy two dot sixteen dot one dot four. Here we go. Let me do show ARP. See if it's in here. 21, that's port 25. Okay, it means that I can use, let me just, I can use this one and that one. Because this one is over here and this one is over here. It means that when I copy a file from 172.16.1.21, I will copy that to 
172.16.1.2, I will go like that. It means that Nagios should complain about the bandwidth, because this is my local area network, right? And I will copy like, I don't know, 10 gigabytes, right? We leave it for 10 or 15 minutes, and that should be enough for Nagios to trigger some alerts. We'll do that in part two. Thank you very much.